Okay, folks, here we go. Uh, this is Saturday night, and uh, we're going to have some eight ball world Scotch doubles. Um, well, I think we are. Bracket has been drawn, and we'll have a quick look. We'll get that updated. And uh, it's uh, single elimination. Uh, uh, it's I thought it was double elimination. It, uh, anyway, it's <coughs> single elimination. And we've got uh, allergies and ma is that magic? Don't know who the hell that is. We'll find out in a minute. Magic something and Dillinger and Mr. Bill, they're playing in a first round match. And the winners of that match are going to play G Money and Bongaholic. Popman and Wanwa and Wit and Ed Ball have both got a bye to the second round. And it is a race to five. So we might as well go in and watch that first match. Right, so we'll drop in. Oh, I was doing a test earlier and I put the background off. Wait, I'll just fix that. I don't like the background off. <coughs> there we go. So this is uh, eight ball world Scotch doubles. Now, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but basically um, the sort of major rule of this game is that it's a call shot game. As far as I'm aware. And uh, there's no slop, but the general rule of all eight ball games usually is the fact that uh, when you break off and a ball goes down, it's still an open table until you've selected the set of balls you want to go for, i.e. the solids or the stripes. Now in this case, uh, Magic 1 and Allergies are at the table. And they are going for the solids. Scotch doubles again. The reminder is that each player in the team takes one shot in turn. So you play one shot, then your partner plays the next shot. So obviously Allergies needs to get down onto that seven ball. And that looks pretty good. So all he needs to do now, Magic 1, is just roll through and leave his partner the eight into the middle. Which I think is an automatic call shot. I might be wrong. Yes, it is. So it is a call shot game, but all the rest of the the shots, uh, the game doesn't automatically call the shots, but unless it's a, a, a bank or a combo, um, those are the only shots that you really should call banks and combos. And obviously miss call something that you fluke. I'm just having a check at the stream quality. And it looks not bad. It looks okay so far. So first rack to Magic 1 and Allergies. And a dry break. Let's have a little check and see things are working okay. Yep. Let's find out where these guys are from, first of all. Right, I know Bill's from the States, I think. Allergy's from the States as well. Magic One is from the States. And Dillinger is from Switzerland, so... Three players from the one country. This time, Mr. Bill and his partner are on the solids. And uh, if you look at the table, uh, these solids look good what's left. Uh, everything's there to be taken. The only problem is obviously going to be that eight ball where it's sitting. There is a path to get to the eight ball where that arrow's pointing, but 
that is extremely fine. In fact, it would have to be shot roughly like that to make the potting angle on the four on the sorry the eight. But we'll see what how they manage to do here. But that's going to be tough to get to the eight ball. And Mr. Bill has already got another tough shot. Uh, in getting his partner on this five, but not too straight. There's a slight angle, and that gets the cue ball out. It's only a tiny angle, but it gets the cue ball out to there. Now, if he can get it far enough, well, he's left it too square. And that's forcing Bill into trying to run into the ball. If he'd got it there, he'd a chance to roll that one in and get the cue ball to about there. But it was asking a lot to do it. Well, Bill, I would have thought he'd have been a lot more aggressive. So now the the pressure's on. He's, Dillinger's is going to be forced to call a pocket. And he's going to kick at the eight. And the off chance that it might kick into that top left-hand corner pocket, but it hasn't. But uh, what has happened is the cue stuck behind one of the opponent's balls, and they're going to be in trouble in a second or two. Now, this is where... The rat can go right against you, even though you're in such a strong position, you've only got eight ball to pot. If these guys get their head together and play the right shots, they can wait for the opportunity to go for a run out. It's not a good position right now to go for a run out. And Bill's going to jump and call the eight into this bottom left hand corner pocket. It's a bit close though. If he misses this though, there could be problems. Oh, I thought he was going to edge in off that 12 ball there. So, and he's also fouled as well. He actually must have touched the 13 ball when he was trying to jump over it. So it should be ball in hand, I think, to Magic 1 and Allergies, which it is. Now... That cluster of balls there is the problem over here. This this cluster. And if you can get onto that ball, that'll certainly <coughs> allow you to maybe nudge something. Something has to move here. The way it is. And Allergies took the chance there, and that's now sitting perfect. So here is where Magic One and Allergies can steal another rack here. And very strong odds they should do it. And the last ball to pop will be the one in the bottom left-hand corner here next to the eight ball, because that obviously leaves you very adjacent to the eight. However, they've gone just a little bit out of a line. That's okay now. So the important one is getting the cue ball in the middle of the table for that nine ball on the right hand side. And don't leave it short, get the cue ball right out into the table. Well he's left it a wee bit short and now Allergies has to trickle this in just to let the cue ball hold for the twelve. And that's still okay. A little cut back. So you see what I mean about getting all the way down to the eight ball. And if you can't get that, get on the eight ball with a cluster of balls that was round about it, you've uh, ended up losing the rack. That's the uh, the thing about eight ball eight ball games. It tends to end up like that in many racks. So Dillinger and Mr. Bill have got work to do already. Two 0 down. And it all came about getting onto that eight ball and Bill needed to be a bit more aggressive when he tried to run into those balls to try and move stuff and uh, he didn't hit it anywhere near hard enough. And that gave them, the opponents, a chance and they took it.
Let's get with a little plug in. So we're in rack number three. Magic one and allergies are on the solids. And Dillinger and Bill on the stripes. And right now, this table looks not too bad. The problem is the position on this uh, 14 ball. And I think they're in trouble. I think if he can, Bill really needs to try and call, well he's called the 11, he tried to nudge it in and all he's done is block the pocket, which means that looking at that uh, two ball there, that's the problem for Magic 1 and Allergies and actual getting a, a position on that to, to pot it. So that might be the lifeline for Bill and his partner in this rack. Just changed to my other mouse. My other mouse is better for actually using the little doodle machine. I'll just do a quick swap. That's a bit better. So Dillinger looking to take out the 15 ball. Well this is throwing all your eggs into one basket because that's the blocker has gone. The blocker has gone from that pocket and let's have a look. Well Dillinger I think has failed and you can be looking at 3-0 here in a minute. He had to get on that 13 ball when he took the 15 first. He should have played the harder, the harder shot first and get rid of the 13. And always keep that ball over the pocket as the, the emergency escape route. And that's the way you've got to think sometimes. Well, if he's called that in the middle pocket, that was excellent. That's a brilliant shot. I'll just watch that in the stream again. That was a great shot. However, no position in the 14, so they're still in desperate trouble here. Uh -huh. Let's have a look at that 7 ball. Now, if you can get on the 7, in such a way, you can maybe draw off that and split the 3 and the 8. Although looking at it, yeah, the 3 doesn't go past the 8 that way. But it does go past the 8 into the corner pocket, so something has to give here to get that uh, 7 ball out of the way. Well, Allergy seems tempted to call the combo on this 7. For me, that's a bit risky. I think if he pots a 6 and gets round and avoids that 14 ball in the bottom rail there and gets up for the 1, at least he can give his partner a chance of getting him on the 7. And that was always going to be the problem. Now, this one cuts... Now, the path of the cue ball would mean it would finish down there. Well, let's 
they've moved the seven. That's opened it up. The only problem is they haven't actually hooked their opponents in the fourteen. Uh, it wasn't a great shot that. They had a much better opportunity to stick them right in behind the eight ball. Well, they're directly behind the three, so that's going to get rid of that. And in all honesty, it should be 3-0. Now I'm just going to change the frame rate of this game. Hang on a minute. I don't know what. I think it defaulted back to... No, that's the wrong thing. I let me just set that. I don't know why it's away up at 120. So, an awkward cut in the 8 for 3-0. But in it goes, so... It is not looking good for Mr. Bill and Dillinger. Another dry break. Now here's an important choice for Dillinger because these uh, these straight balls are all in the open. And they've got to make a concerted effort here to run this rack. They've really got to take their time. There's no shot clock in this tournament. So they do have to take their time and... Uh, make this as good a chance as they can to get a rack on the board and stop this run because if they don't they're pretty much down and out I would say and this is where it tests your ability to keep control of the cue ball and make sure you know exactly what you're doing when you're playing your shot where you want to put the cue ball for your partner for the next shot. And Dillinger with this one, he wants to come back for that 15 probably. The one at the top end of the table. And he's running through and you see... Well, I don't think he... I don't, I'm not sure what he played for. I, I presume he played for the 14. He's actually left his partner a shot in the 9. And now the problem is that the 14 balls isolated down at the bottom end of the table, down where we are. And they've really somehow got to take care of that. They've only got the 15 and the 11, which is to the right of the 3. And that nudge on the 1 there has done nothing. And now they're in trouble. Because the, they've got to try and get this safe, or he's got to cut this past the five. And he's missed the cut. And who's the luck? Well, it's left open. Well, there's a lifeline straight away. Magic one rushing his shot. But. Look at what he's left. He's got away with it. And it looks like... Uh, well, Dylan just... Getting the jump stick out. And this... This basically has to go in the hole. You would think. Well, if there's a problem ball... Not that it's really that much of a problem, but it's that one. Because obviously it's blocked by the 8, but you get the cue ball down to here. Easily play it into the bottom corner. And there's two balls up there, that one ball and the 6 ball, that will allow you to do that. Get in behind the 7. Let's see how they play it. 
Well, he's actually finished right behind the seven right now, so you should take care of that right now. <coughs> <coughs> Get rid of the problem ball, and the rest should be plain sailing. Oh, no. Oh, a nice little nudge. But if that was any slower, he'd have been frozen against the three ball. Still okay. Well, this is a little tester. It's about controlling the pace of the cue ball. And it's all too easy. It's 4 0. No, I used to play, um, I used to play snooker quite a lot, but that would be about 20 odd years ago now. Started off playing eight ball uh, pub on the small tables, that's where I started. Or black ball as you would call it now. And then I moved on to snooker. But uh, the only snooker I play now is virtual, in virtual pool 4. <laughs> well, magic 1, analogies at the table. 4-0 up, race to 5. They're on the solids. And um, they've got a couple of problems. The 6 ball, that one, and the 4 ball are in awkward positions. Now, does that six ball go past? I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. Or does it? Well, he's going to try and squeeze it in off the jaw, but it isn't going to go. Oh, I've heard the Robin Hull. Well, my, my, my uh, snooker memories go back a bit further than Robin Hull. Back to Ray Reardon and Higgins and Mountjoy and Graham Miles and David Taylor. A lot of the old players, even Rex Williams. I remember watching all of them. And that was before Davis came along. So here's Bill. And his partner at the table trailing 4 0. And their chances of a run out here are fairly slim unless he moves that 14 ball. Well, he's nudged the 14, knocked in the 6, that's still a legal shot. And I've now finished on the 14. Let's look at the 9 ball. Well, the 9 ball goes, but now they're totally out of shape again. Dylan just struggling for the positional shots, and Bill's going to have to call the bank. No, he's playing it safe. Now, how good a safety shot was that? And I think uh, you'd have to say it's not that great. Table's wide open. Allergies and magic one. Well, if he can pot this four and get the cue ball around for the three, 
there's five pockets that the three ball can go in. And that's finished in a sort of no man's land position. Yeah, Mika's a good player. I watched quite a few of the quite a few of the pool streams on uh, either YouTube on POV Pool or on Ustream. He, um, there's quite a few streaming tournaments that I like to watch. So here's Bill's chance. Dillinger at the table. Oh, a nice cut in the 11 and a nice kiss in the 9. Bill just double checking there wasn't any other balls left in the table. Should be easy enough to drop behind the 8. So this to get one on the board. Yeah, they've got a lot of work to do though. Trailing 4-1. Magic 1 in allergies. Well, Magic One going to break off in rack number six. And in goes the twelve. Now it's still an open table until Allergies makes his choice and what his next ball's going to be. Although that uh, strike ball's going down, they haven't made their choice yet until they put the next ball. So they're now on the stripes. It's just a pity that uh, Pool doesn't get a lot of coverage. It certainly doesn't get a lot of coverage in the UK. The only real time you see Pool or anybody gets to watch Pool is uh, the Moscone Cup. But a lot of uh, a lot of Pool fans watch the streams online. That's the great thing about having YouTube and a lot of the the guys that stream some of the. The tourneys that are on, some of them are pay-per-view, quite a few of them are free to view. Well, we've got a bit of a mess up in the top left now. The 15 and the 5 are frozen together. So there's uh, work to be done for whoever's going to win this rack. Uh, but we've got, we've got guys, uh, oh, the next, the next, the next stream that I'm going to do, uh, will be on, uh, let me think, it'll be probably Tuesday afternoon UK time, and it'll be an American truck simulator. Um, I've got a trip lined up, which is going, uh, down the ice road on, uh, <clears throat> the Dalton and Elliot Highway. I did a, I did the first video the other day from the north heading down, and the second one I'm going to do is from where I finished off on the first trip. I've got a job that's going to take me down the Attigan Pass. Well, you'll be what? You'll be a couple of hours in front of the UK, or one hour in front of the UK. It's. Uh, what time is it here? It's 8.30 here, so it'll be 9.30 in Finland at the moment. Well, these balls are now sitting wide open for Bill and Dillinger. Provided uh, they can get onto these balls. Now, I would say without any disrespect to Dillinger, that Bill is by far the stronger player in the team. Um, Dillinger's uh, 
struggle a wee bit for position and that's what makes all the difference in being able to run racks having said that uh, Bill's not exactly played the best positional shot there Dillinger's got a toughy and you've got to cut this two ball in it's, it's, it's just a must he has to get it and there's no point in thinking about it if he pots the two and he plays it correctly cue ball goes off the rail if he hits it hard enough it will come back across for the four he's got to cut this and cut it with a bit of a uh, decent pace well you see he's not put a lot of thought into that there's the right way to play it and the wrong way to play it you've got to play it the right way and as it is he's left Bill nothing Bill's got a bank it looks a good bank for this four ball past the nine into this middle pocket oh well he'll take that any time and look how it's finished on the eight ball now that is a bit of good fortune he certainly didn't play it in off the nine but it all helps so this for four two two hours difference so you're half ten Well, we've got a we've got a few uh, champion quality players that play virtual pool four, no doubt about that. <coughs> we've got some very good players that play this game. Unfortunately, not a lot of them play actually in tournaments. A lot of them tend to just come in and play in uh, challenge rooms and then uh, leave the tournaments alone. So Bill and Dillinger trailing by two at the point of no return. And Magic won an allergies on the solids. They've got two solids over the left hand top pocket, one over the left middle, the four over the bottom corner. But they're blocked out in those, so he's going to have to take the little combo onto the five. Just a gentle combo to leave the two there. Well, he's run far enough now to get rid of the six. That's a problem ball there. You can take the six and come over for the four. Well, Magic One's leaving it for the one in the middle. Now, this is the important one. There's a big gap to get to that two ball. Magic One's played the big draw and... Now, can he cut that in? Yes, he can. And that opens the pocket for the eight ball. But Allergies is going to have to get lucky here to get the gap onto that eight. Or get, get it from there. Oh well that is there's there's a there's a luck of the kiss there. Bill got it in the last rack and this time, although it's awkward for magic one, you should be able to push this eight ball in. So Magic One and Allergies have won the match by five racks to two. So that's the end of the first round matches. Let's have a look at the bracket. That bracket has now updated surprisingly quickly this time. And, um, well, that match is just about to start. What we'll do is, is we'll go into the match that's already underway, the second round match um, that's currently sitting at two racks all. We've got Wanwa and Popman who are playing Ed Ball and Wit. And let's just have a quick reminder of where they're all from, I think Portman's from the UK, 
He's from England. Wit is from Wales. Ed Bell from Canada. And Wanwa from Italy. So there's a cosmopolitan mixture of uh, countries in that uh, matchup. And well, the combo's been played. The one ball was called. So Portman and Wanwa are on the solids. Well, it's messy round about the eight ball. If we look at that, um, let's have a look. Get up to that end of the table. You can see the eight ball goes between those two balls there. Now, if Portman and one were going to do anything, they're going to have to get rid of these three here. Well, that's actually made the eight ball worse. The eight ball's now out of the game where it's sitting there. It's really awkward to get onto it for any any pocket. Now can Ed Val see that fourteen? Yes, I think he can cut it in. Oh, dear's going to scratch. That's unlucky. But there's no immediate damage done here because Wanwa and Portman have got to do something about the 8-ball. They can't get to the 8-ball. So their chances of running out here are fairly slim unless they do something very quickly. Now, what I would suggest is he fought a six and gets rid of the three, and if he can get an angle on that seven, they've a chance to split them, but they've got this problem ball here, the four balls down this end of the table. And one was, well, he's played down the bottom of the table, he's got no shot in the four. Four ball doesn't go anywhere unless he plays a an extremely thin cut into the right middle. Oh, it looks as like if he's lining up the combo. Now here's where you've got to think, because if you play this combo, the worst thing that's gonna happen here is is one of these balls is gonna bounce into those two balls and open it up. So he's playing it at a pace that isn't going to allow that to happen, so that's not a bad shot. Okay, he's missed the combo, but they've still got a lifeline there, because these guys have got work to do. Now, has he got the angle in the 13? Well, Wit can pot the 13, and that opens up the 8, but he's he doesn't look keen. It looks as if he's going to keep it tight. Well, what's going to happen now? Well, that's now changed it. Because the eight ball is now open. But Wit's partner doesn't have a shot that is easy. This is tough. This one, uh, this 11 ball into the bottom right hand corner. Very difficult to read the angle in this because you're looking down on the cue ball. He's 
Yeah, very tough. And the danger with this shot here is when you're potting a seven, if you put top on it, the chances are you're going to brush off the three and scratch along with the seven ball. He's got to be careful here. Beware of the scratch off the three the three ball. That's why he's digging down. Oh, that's finished nice. Now let's have a look at the eight. Well, the eight goes past that nine, no problem. The, the pocket's wide open, so it's all about getting on the four. Well, I don't know why wits call and miss call. Oh, he's not playing the replay. Goodness knows what happened there now. I'm confused. Well, there was only one ball that was going to pot there. Remember, it is a cold shot game. And pot, pot man isn't saying anything which is a bit worrying. Right, that's what it is. Right, I think we're okay to go now. Anyway, so where we're at is is Wit and Ed Ball are on the stripes. The four balls hanging over the bottom left hand corner pocket. And right now Ed Ball if he played the right shot he would stun the cue ball up to here to leave his partner on one of these two balls here to get rid of them. Well, he's tried it. He's got him on the 13. That'll do. Now, Wit. I don't know whether he can avoid hitting that 15. I don't. He needs to get a lot of draw into the cue ball if he is. Well, he's nudged it. And he's got a bit lucky. Finished on the nine. Now what's he doing here? Just draw it up into the middle of the table. If he goes too far to the right, he's going to leave his partner an awkward one in this 15. But he's played it well. And now it should be easy because you can just run through off the rail, maybe a wee bit of right hand English just to bring the cue ball back this way oh he needs to hit it though, he's got to hit it you've got him, I mean the worst thing he can do is fall short he had plenty of room to get that cue ball anywhere up here by the middle pocket rather than there big big area right in there, that area there is where he, he could have put the cue ball anywhere in there would have been perfect. And now his partner is under pressure. But he's played it well. But he shouldn't have had to play it from that angle. But it does take Wit and Ed Ball into the lead. Three racks to two.
Now, something dropped here. I don't know what it was. What went? Oh, the cue ball. Well, that's the only ball that went down. So, ball in hand for Wit and Ed Ball. Or is it ball in hand in the kitchen, I think? Is it? No, it's not. Ball in hand anywhere by the looks of it. Or is it? Maybe it is ball in hand in the kitchen off a scratch. Anyway, Wits made his choice there on the stripes. And the eight ball is still tied up in that cluster, so once again the run out looks fairly slim unless something moves. Well, here's a chance here. If Whit wants to be aggressive, they're 3-2 up. He's got a shot on the 12, mind you, he's dead straight, so he's got no angle to get into those balls. But there's a possibility off that 14. If you can get this sort of angle on the 14, pot the 14 and get the cue ball there, you can move the 8 that way. So you've got to plan ahead. But if you look at the 8 ball, from this angle, the 8 ball pots, provided there's no balls there and blocking that pocket, but that doesn't look to be the case. They're going to have to deal with this 8 ball another way if they get that far. And he's finished. Well, there's an angle, he can actually nudge into it, but you're taking a risk here. Oh, look where the 8 ball's gone, it's kicked to 2 and it's open to the pocket. And his partner's on the 11, so this is a, a tough ask for Ed Ball now, because the other problem is that two's blocking the 13. And that's, well, Ed Ball's leaving it up to his partner to deal with the 13. Well, he's... Wit's going to try and squeeze it in, but that's not going to squeeze in off the two, because the two's too close to the rail. And that's going to hit the eight ball as well, so this will be an interesting outcome. Well, he's knocked the two in, and he's also scratched. So, Portman and one what trailing 3-2. Well, it is ball in hand anywhere on the table. <coughs> well, he's going to get rid of the one. Now, pot the five, cue ball off the rail and out for the six. And if you pot the six, the cue ball can come up here for the three or the four. Got to get rid of that five. Oh dear, what's happened here? Well, they'll get an easy safety, there's no doubt about that. And the eight ball blocks the pocket for the 13, so Popman and Wanwa are in a strong position here. And it's going to take something silly for them to give this rack away. A nice little nudge there after that jump, nudging the six. So here's the shot that we spoke about. Pot the six and just let the cue ball roll. So you don't need a lot of pace on this, just enough to pot it and let it roll to the rail and come out. Well, that's, that's on one of the lines, but look at how tight that is. That is uh, a bit of test of nerve. And the angle isn't perfect here and he's also close to the rail, but 
He's going to leave it in the middle. It's going to be a toughie. And that cue ball, it wants to go that way. You don't want it to finish there. And he's missed a three, but the eight ball is the lifeline. It's the blocker. So now Ed Ball has a problem to deal with here. Now what he should do is, is make sure that this three ball is it an awkward cut one way or another? Now, has he called anything? Well, he's done the right thing. He's tried to freeze the 13 to the 8. He's conceding the 3 ball, but even so, the 3 ball is still very awkward where it is. It's a very thin cut. And, um,. Well, there's also a danger of the scratch as well into the bottom left-hand corner. Oh, the three ball going to hit these. Well, that's ended up... That has ended up pretty damn good. Wit has got no shot in the 13. He can't see it. <laughs> <coughs> and he needs to try and roll on to the 13. And if he doesn't hit it, and doesn't do something to try and tie up that three ball, he's going to concede this rack. He needs to get wise here. He'd probably be better just rolling to the three and locking the three to the 13 and conceding ball in hand. He doesn't want to do anything stupid to open these up. Oh, he's managed to hit it, but he's opened it up, and all he's done is is given a rack away. And it's now going to be three all. Yeah, I still say it'd have been better just conceding the foul there and tying the three ball up. And forcing the opponents to try and uh, either leave it safe or try and open something up there. And that's why they ended up losing the rack. So we're all square. Race to five. Now, we've still got an open table. The 15 has gone down. But uh, Wit and Ed Ball don't have to to play the stripes but he's looking around and that uh, if he chooses the stripes the problem there is the sevens block in the pocket for three balls one two three Well, I don't know where the next ball's going to come from when he pots this 10. But uh, whatever Wit does here, he's going to have to force this 10 ball into the middle and try and get the cue ball off the bottom rail and back up behind those uh, three balls up at the top end of the table to try and leave his partner a shot. And he's tried it. He's always a kiss. And what's he got? Let's have a look. Well, he's got a 13 up there, but that's about it. The 9 does go b uh, past the 6.
Well, that was a good shot. But his partner, the best he can do with here is cut that nine towards the corner pocket, even if it hangs over it. It's still better than nothing. I think he's got a chance to do it and he, he might as well go for it. We can see it goes past the two. He's got to get it thin. Well, he's hit it into the six. So... This is a chance for 1 1 Portman, though he should believe in that 7 ball over the corner as the backup. And uh, getting rid of the 2 ball and the 6 ball. So the safety played. So right now, even though Portman and Wanwa have got more balls to pot, they're in the strongest position. The way the table's lying at the moment. Be interesting to see how it ends up though. Well, can Portman nudge into the eight here? Let's have a look and see what angle he's got. Probably not. We sent that to the jaw. That was a poor shot. Not a great shot, but not a lot of damage done. Now this is where, where the tactics of uh, eight ball come in. You've got one ball protect in a pocket, and uh, Wit and Ed Battle are on the stripes, and they've got no real shot. And the question is, is when Wan Wan and Portman are prepared to go for the run out. And now would be as good a time as any. But one was seems more inclined to try and cut the th the three ball, and he's missed it. And well, <coughs> a grave error there. And ball in hand to Ed Ball and Wit. And Ed Ball just needs to draw back and avoid the eleven to leave his partner the eleven into the same pocket. Well, he's playing this with left-hand English. That's going to check the cue ball the other way towards the seven. But he's played it softly. Now, again, his partner's stuck to the rail. There's not a lot he can do with this cue ball. At least of all, get on this eight. They're going to have no shot in the eight by the looks of it, unless he hits something. Now this is a critical shot. The match all square, three racks all. And of course, he couldn't really do anything with the cue ball. So now they're on the eight, but with no shot on it. And I, I don't really see, I don't really see any options available to him here. I don't think there's there's a, nowhere in the table that's safe. Oh, I'm starting to get tired already, just after nine o'clock, the usual time. Well, 
Now, why, while they're thinking about that, let's have a look and uh, look at the other match. We'll see the other match. Uh, G Money and Bongaholic are getting a rack, so they're actually already 3 1 up against Allergies and Magic ones, so they've got work to do. And we're still looking at this eight ball Ed Ball's putting a lot of thought into it, but I don't know how or what he's uh, trying to do here. It's anybody's guess. Well, that's not going to get to the rail. That's a fatal mistake. So now Popman. Ball in hand. That isn't a great shot either, but easy enough for one way to knock the three onto the seven if he wanted. But he's refused that. Now Popman can kill the cue ball, he can leave one with the, the three ball onto the seven. Which might be the right thing to do. Because the one thing is, is that, uh, well... Still, that shot is still on. The problem is if you leave the seven ball there and then try and get on that three ball from the seven, it could go wrong. And he's got no shot in the five, so he should be playing that three ball on the seven. And now it's now it's uh, it could go all wrong. The three ball should have been taken care of. Okay. Popman's got a shot in a five, and Popman's now left with the problem of getting his partner on that three. And we've seen time and time again, you get it wrong, you finish the, the top side of that three ball, and you'll have no shot. You've got to finish here, or here, and avoid the eight ball, which I think he has done, has he? Let's have a look. Ah, he's okay. Now, don't leave it short this time. Pot the three, cue ball, off the rail and back up the table. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, I did say they should have got rid of the three ball earlier on. And if you don't, if you don't think with common sense that three ball was easy to get out of shape on, but it was a bad miss, but it should have been taken care of earlier in the rack. But... The three ball has come to the rescue. It's blocked to eight. Wet called the bank. He's missed the bank. And he's got it safe though. Well, this is anybody's rack. Anything can happen. Potman's surely got to call the bank into the middle or into the the top right hand corner pocket. He's got to call either of those two pockets, surely. Or is he going to try the safety and hook them behind the three? Very dangerous because it's probably easy enough for them to jump over that. You've got to be careful. Well, I haven't seen him call a shot. And if it's going to be a bank, he should be calling it. Well, he's tried to get it safe. He's not done it, and he's just gifted a rack. Easy enough, eight ball into the corner. Don't hit it too hard, just let the weight of the ball take it into the pocket.
So, Wit and Ed Ball back in the lead. Four racks to three. Just needing one more. And they've made their choice. They're on the stripes. And it's finished outward straight away. <coughs> a bit of a mess now. Well, now we'll get balls tied up in left and right hand corner pockets at the top end, so a lot of work to do here. Well, one more deciding to concede control of the table. He played his two ball onto the blocking uh, strike ball, got rid of it, and that now ain't, that ends your turn. It's not a foul to pot your opponent, uh, pot your opponent's ball with your own object ball, but you concede your visit to the table, and he's left it awkward, which is actually not bad. Well, it's missed to 11. That pocket's now free. But the same problems on the right hand side of the table. And Ed Val looks as if he's going to try the same thing. He's going to try and get rid of the uh, 14 ball using the 7, I think. Although that uh, that 14, as you can see, is going to the jaw. I think you need to push the 7 into the rail to try and nudge the 14 in. Yep, rattled in the jaws. But it's now opened up the 7. And that's still a good, a good move. It's now got the pressure on Ed Ball and Wit to try and run out. So that's not a bad thing, actually. Um, forcing your opponents to go for the run out. Because the table's sitting good. And if you get a chance, it's your chance to tie the match up. So an important visit for Wit and his partner. Well, he's got a couple of nudges finished on the 11. That isn't exactly what he played. But whatever Ed Ball does here, he needs to make sure he's given his opponent a shot on one of these balls because the nine ball sitting upward, and it's not changed in any way. Now there is a shot here for wit. You put the fifteen into there, cue ball off there, off the end rail, off the side rail, and down to here. Now the further you go down here, obviously the chances are your partner has a shot in the nine ball there. Or maybe into this bottom corner pocket, but he has to move the cue ball. Let's see what he does. It's got to travel a big, big distance. And the best he'll get, well, look at the cue ball anyway, he's missed a 15. Well, his partner would have had a cut on the 9. Either, well, very, very tight into that middle pocket, but... He could have had a cut down into that uh, corner pocket, but as it is, it's been missed. 
Well, that's not going to get to the pocket. And now what does uh, Ed Ball do with the nine? I think he has to do something to move that nine. He, can, he, he can't hit the 15, so he's got to move the nine. And it might be better, if he's going to play this thin, it might be better to call a pocket here. I don't see him calling a pocket. And it's dangerous to play this shot if he doesn't. He's going to call one. It's either got to be the middle of that corner pocket. He's called the corner. He's going for the thin cut. And the danger here is he'll split that three and five. Doesn't he want to do that? And he's split the three and five. He's missed the nine. And, uh, well, it could be... It could be going to a final rack decider here. Now, when he was cutting that nine ball, he could have played bottom left English to avoid the contact on the three ball and splitting them. He could have taken evasive action to avoid that, and he didn't. And, uh, well, that's still down to not planning ahead and not thinking about what you're doing. And there's a lot of players don't think about the follow-up to the shot they're about to play and the consequences of uh, getting it wrong and it's now given Portman and one what a chance admittedly it's now gone slightly awkward five balls in behind us the eight the five goes in obviously into the corner pocket but he's not sitting pretty in anything he's got a an awkward shot in the one Where's the cue ball going? That's okay. Well, he's got a pot in the two ball down the rail, and the cue ball might actually run up and split the five and eight. That's dangerous because he's no guarantee of getting on anything, so he's playing the six. Well, it's now in such a position that Portman can pot the two, cue ball can come off the rail, he doesn't want to finish in here, he wants to just get to there, somewhere about there to be able to play the five, don't, oh he's hung up the two, well and look what he's done, he would have hooked his partner behind the 15 anyway, and he can see the nine, But, and I say but, the two balls are blocker for that bottom left hand corner. So, Witt's got a, a good shot to play here to try and get back for the 15. He's nowhere near it. He's potted the two with the nine. And he's left uh, Witt and Ed Ball with a thin cut on the five. It does go. And... Um, you have to say this has got to be to, to stay in the match, surely. He's overdone it. How's his luck? Well, it's not too bad. It, there's nothing easy. Can you see that nine? Oh. Well, I think you can just see enough of it to cut it past the eight ball. But either or, 15 ball isn't a gimme. Well, a good shot, but has he held it enough? I think he has. 
It's a very thin one in the night. And he doesn't want to hit this too hard. Cue ball's going to take care of itself. Oh dear. Well, I certainly wouldn't want to play this eight ball. But this for the match. Watch the cue ball, if he hits it too hard, needs to watch the scratch. And in it goes. So Ed Ball and Wit win the match by five racks to three. Okay, let's see where we are in the other match. The other match is tied at, uh, sorry, is 4-3 to G Money and Bongaholic. We'll dive into that one. So we can see that Wit and Ed Ball are in the final. So this is to see who's going to meet them. And um, Allergies and uh, Magic One are on the stripes. Team Two getting one game of a start. Magic One's got to call the 12, surely. He's got to play on to the 12. Well, he's not called it, but it's obvious what he was doing. Well, he would have liked to leave the 15 there as a blocker, but he's got no other shot. Allergies. And the 14 goes, but the 9 certainly is tight. Past that one ball. Let's have a look. Believe it or not, that nine does go past the one, but no. Well, it was an awkward one. <coughs> so G Money and Bongaholic. At the table on the solids. The six ball goes past the 14. He's got no other shot. Surely he's got to go for the six. He's got to get rid of that. I mean, he's on it. Plenty of room past the 14. You got a double decker bus past there. But what's he done for his partner? Well, he's got a shot in the three. Again, no other shot, and the other problem is the five balls along the rail there with the 13. Well, he's going for the cut in the one. Is he on the four? No, frozen to the two. I don't see any safety option here at all that's going to prevent their opponents from having a shot at uh, that 14 ball. He's going to try and kick the three in, he's looking at that angle. Off the side rail, down onto the three. Uh, 
Well, it looks as if he's he's trying to billiard off the eight ball with the two into the middle. Well, he's stuck the eight ball in the left hand rail, so at least that's a bit awkward. And the only shot they do have is on the 14. That's actually turned out not too bad. I mean, the 13, you can certainly get on it. Pot the 14, cue ball off the rail and down there. And cut the 13 that way. But look at where the 9 is. Oh, he's got the wrong spin on it. All he's done is just checked and killed the cue ball. And it looks as if Magic 1 has called the bank. It's not there. Well, G Money is going to open the pocket. Pot the three, leave the five for his partner, and this might work out quite well. Now what he has to do here is, when he pots this five, that cue ball has to go off the rail and get out to at least here, so that he can pot the four and leave that two ball. It's an easy enough route out. I think he's too straight, so he's left at a longer distance. And all he's going to do is his roll to the end rail. Oh dear. Well, he's fluked it. That, strictly speaking, in the rules of the game, should be a missed call. He didn't call the pocket, but he's fluked it anyway. It did go into the pocket he was aiming at. Yeah, these guys, these guys do have to call the pocket. Anyway, 
in the end, the match was won by G Money and Bongaholic, but it is a call pocket game. Um, <coughs> anyway, it's all over. As far as that goes, we're in the final one way or another, and Wit and Ed Ball are going to play G Money and Bongaholic. And I think it's a race to five as well. Yeah, race to five all rounds. And we will go in. They should just be lagging off now. In fact, I think they have lagged. We've missed a lag. So G Money and Bongaholic um, are going to break. We're playing a scratch match. Race to five, no handicap. I'm going to nip away for two seconds just to get a, a bottle of water and get a drink. So this is the 8 ball world rules final in the uh, Saturday night Scotch doubles tournament. So the choice has been made, Ed Ball and Wit are on the solids. Well that 3 ball is a bit awkward there, but it can be got at along the rail, so if you play the 7, you can certainly get on the 3 there. Now, does that one cut past the 15? Let's have a look. Let's nip up to that end. Well, no, it doesn't, so... Oops, wrong one. So Bongaholic playing the stripes. Well, you see, you should be taking care of that 15 ball and the 9 ball up there in the top end first of all, and leaving this uh, cluster down the bottom to start with. So look what he's done. He's now left it extremely awkward for his partner. He's got no shot in those balls up the top end now, and now he's left his partner nothing but a 13 ball into the right middle. Not a well thought out shot again. And his partner's missed it. And that, this is where people just make the wrong choices of shot at the wrong time. When you're on balls that are at... I mean, there's, there's those two balls there that were in the open. That was the ones they could have got rid of first of all. Um, and then try and deal with the, the 14 and 10 ball later on because you've still got these three balls gathered down at the bottom end of the table but either way circumstances have changed. Head ball cutting the one. Can you hit the 15? Question is is where the cue balls can end up. Well, he's he's missed the cut. He's blocked the pocket. Um, now, Bongaholic has a chance to get rid of that 14, and that's the one he should be getting rid of. He should be taking that straight away. Shouldn't be any other thought in his mind other than getting that 14 ball in the hole. Well, a really ambitious shot here would be to try and pot that 15 and draw the cue ball in by the 11. 
because the 11 isn't going in there, it's blocked by the 3. And the top pocket is blocked by the 1, so Bongaholic and G Money aren't in a good position here. And that's a scratch. So this is Wit and Ed Ball's chance. Ball in hand. Now the one thing you do is you leave the three ball there as your emergency backup. You're committed to taking the one ball. You've got to surely leave the seven or the five to go, to play a shot to get on the three. Now, what the hell is Wit doing? They're on the solids. He's playing a stripe. Am I just blinding them out of sync? Yes, he's made a total hash of that. Well, that's one way of gifting your opponents a chance. So, Bongaholic and G Money. Well, they've blown their chance. But they've taken the opportunity to open the pocket. They've nudged their nine onto the three that was a blocker. The nine's now hanging over the pocket, and that forces Ed Ball and Wit to run out. Now's the time to drop onto the three. And he's dead straight. So a little bit of bottom and left hand English. And is there enough on it? Where's it going to finish? Oh dear. Well. I think there's a big enough gap there from just to cut that in. He needs to get it really, really thin. And how the hell is he going to get on the eight ball? That's the question. I think that might go to the jaw. Yeah. Yeah, too much. So, that manoeuvre by Bongaholic is going to work in their favour. Oh dear, what the hell's going on here now? Why the hell's he playing a big draw? He just needed to drop that in. Um, I mean, you just drop the nine in and leave leave the eight ball down into this bottom left. Now he's immediately put pressure on Bongaholic to, to cut this eight down the rail. Again, poor thinking. I mean, you should still get this. Oh dear. Well, that's going to go into the wrong pocket, so that's a missed call. And a missed call in eight loses a rack. So it's 1 0 to Wit and Ed Ball. But that was a terrible, terrible shot in that nine ball. No need to draw the cue ball anywhere. You just need to pot it, kill the cue ball, leave the eight ball down the rail. Where's the problem? Very poor shot. Anyway, you you would hope that people live and learn from the mistakes. That's all you can say. So open table. 
the solids have been potted. Bongaholic and G Money on the solids. Um, let's have a look at that six ball because that looks awkward. Well, it doesn't go into the middle. We can see that it goes into the corner, so it doesn't need to be moved as long as you can get on it. And there's a chance now to get on it off this seven if Ed Bell plays this gentle enough. Well, he's doing his best to tie it up even more, but he's still got a shot in the, the four. The cue ball has really got to come back the way to leave that one ball into the left middle. He's overdone it, so it's going to be into the... Well, he could take the... Can he take the six now? I think he can. Well, he's not looking at it. Can he take the one? And he has to roll through far enough in the five. Let's have a look at that. Well, the five doesn't go. Now, now they've got nothing. Should have took the six when you were on the six. That was the awkward ball. That probably that's probably one of the best uh, the best ways to play this game in in games like this where you have a set of balls that you're going for and when you get that chance on that awkward ball you have to take it out and he didn't so now they've got nothing the six ball he had a shot on it went for the one and now look what they've got absolutely nothing doing here at all unless he gets some squirrely bank shot that he's going to call somewhere It's all about short choices in the games of billiards and making the right decision at the right time. Making the wrong choice at the wrong time usually ends up in disaster. And that cue ball was on the six. The six would have went into the top right hand corner and he refused it. Well, look where that cue ball's finished. That's ended up pretty good. <laughs> he's, he's left nothing on. <laughs> they should be in trouble in a second or two, though. Yeah. You'd have to say that... Uh, G-Money and Bongaholic's chances of uh, winning this rack are rapidly diminishing, especially we can't get to this six and at least hit it. You're going to have to jump. Now, did he call the bank into that pocket? He certainly did. That was excellent. And what's more, he's left his partner on the five, so now it's all changed again. Now, how does Bongaholic get on this eight ball? Well, he's got an angle to do it, but it's really, really awkward over this uh, 12 ball. So this is a chance that Wit and Ed Ball have been waiting on. All their balls still on the table. Can play the combo. 13 on to the, I think it's a 12. 14 doesn't go past the the eight, it's, it's blocked there. Well, if 
14 Shango. Well, this is where you've just got to pot this pocket weight. Well, my little arrow's gone small. How do you make it bigger? Goodness knows what I've done. I'll need to read the instructions on this to find how to make my arrows bigger again. Don't scratch the middle pocket. He's avoided that. But he's finished in no man's land. 14 is going to maybe have to go. And now it's almost got there. He's got a shot in the 12. Might still be okay because I think the 12 is going to block the cut. It certainly is. The 5 won't cut. Certainly not to the left hand pocket, but it does go to the right. But it's going to take a bloody good shot to pot that 5. And he's calling the reverse bank. Well, this has got the very strong likelihood that it could double bank. It could actually go up there and then down there and then back up that way. Well, he's got it. And what about the eight ball? Well, it's off the rail. So this is easy enough to cut down the rail. So this to tie the match up at one all. Got to get this, surely. Yeah, comfortably. Been checking the stream all night. The stream quality looks very good. It's keeping up quite well. 1080p. <coughs> so we've still got an open table. Ed Ball chooses the solids and Wit can pot the two and he can move that uh, he can move into the six ball and the the twelve ball there because I don't think the six is open and he's nudged the six he's left a four into the right middle and it should be the one ball to follow Well, Ed Ball's chosen to go down for the five. Not a bad choice. Now, this is providing he leaves an angle on this six ball. He has to leave an angle, can't leave it straight. Plus, he doesn't want to hook his partner behind the eight ball here. Oh, dear. Well, a straight in five ball, and he's hung it over the pocket. And the only thing that's going to do is block the pocket for the eight. But that's an untidy miss, that one. So we know the 8 ball's not going anywhere unless they play an extremely good shot to get on it into the top left hand corner pocket as we look. But even then the 6 ball's blocking that path so it probably would have to be a bank on the 8 ball. 
And you look where the 15 ball is. 15 balls down there. That's doing nothing. This is a good chance to have a go at the 15. Got to play that now. The worst comes to the worst. If you leave it hanging over the pocket, it's still a not a bad thing. Well, he's getting hit it too hard. Well, the one thing that's lacking in one or two of these players is a uh, touch and control and that in the end even though this is just a virtual game it's it's that touch and control that makes you a better player and you feel for sure getting your mouse dialed in so that you're in control of the pace of the ball but anyway Ed Ball is going to take the five. That opens the pocket. And he's left his partner on the six. And what what doesn't want to do is hit it too hard, which he hasn't. He's just tucked it down the rail. And he's leaving his partner an easy eight ball to go into the lead. So, Ed Ballon Whip lead by two racks to one. Any late comers? This is this week's final of the eight ball world uh, Scottish doubles final. Cue ball very nearly scratching. Well, two solids have gone in there. So, Bongaholic and G-Money on the solid balls. Let's have a look at what we've got. He's got the cut in the seven. He can nudge into the nine. Possibly nudge into the nine, I'm saying he might. I think he, he might. He possibly could avoid it. But if he doesn't hit it too hard, he could leave his partner on the two. So this is where you've once again got to think about the pace. So he's nudged the nine, and that's unlucky. Hooked his partner behind the 11. An unlucky outcome with that kiss. Because you never really know where the cue ball is going to end up once it starts hitting other balls. ball doesn't hit a rail so ball in hand well, 
Well, this is a good table to run out on because Wit and Ed Ball's straight balls are all in the open. And Ed Ball's left dead straight on this 10 ball. Takes a nine, trying to get the cue ball up for the 15. He's done well. Sitting nicely on the 15. And maybe go to the rail and take that uh, 12 ball down the rail, but he's not hit it. It's going to be maybe the 14. The problem is he's dead straight. Now, immediately there is a problem because that uh, 10 ball is stuck there. Now, he could squeeze an angle and try and drop behind it. That's what he's tried and he's done well. So that's going to get rid of the problem ball. Get to the rail, leave his partner on that 12. Well, you see, he's not got to the rail. He's now left it dead straight, virtually. There's a slight angle. And straight away they're causing problems for themselves. He's going to have to force this in to get the cue ball out. Well, he's decided he's not even going to risk that. He's going to leave Wit in no great position in the 11. What the hell is he doing? What well, he's calling the he's called the wrong pocket for the eleven. I'm sure he's called the wrong pocket. Or has he? Maybe it's my mistake this time. <laughs> I'm getting excited myself. I don't forget my brain's in shutdown mode. That's a good eight ball. So it's now three one to wit an eight ball. Race to five. A couple of balls have dropped. Five ball was certainly one of them. Uh, the five and the ten have gone. Well, look at where the cue ball stuck. That's ugly. He's got a cut in the eleven. So they're now on the stripes. Now you could drop the he could drop that 12 into the middle. He drop that in there. And leave a cut on the 9. There. What's he doing? Maybe we'll get a disconnection coming up here. Bongaholic has either walked away from the keyboard or he's losing connection. We'll soon find out. Oh, no, he's awake. And that's about where he could get it. He's left his partner on the nine. The G money could drop behind that 14. The, sh the angle's there to do it. Get to there and play the 14 into the same pocket. Well, he's cut the 15. How's his luck? 
because you're leaving a lot to lock to get position. Well, the nine goes. How, how does he get his partner on that 14? He's going to have to play the 13 somehow. This is going out of line. Now, he could collide with the six or the three here and still hold for that 13. That's that ball there. And the cue ball could maybe hit there or there and at least hold for a shot in the 13. But he doesn't want to play this too hard. Well, he's taking the 14 instead. That's actually ended up pretty good. Got a nice kiss in the one. And he's also still got an angle to get up onto the nine. It needs to keep going. Well, he's almost got there. He's got the same problem again with this time, the nine ball. It pots past the seven, but the cue ball is running into the six or the three. Now, if he hits them half ball, then the cue ball's no, he's hit the other side of the three, and now he's got nothing. And now it's out of line. And the chance of getting it back to 3 2 has all but diminished. Unless he can somehow kick the 8 and call a pocket. Called the left middle as we look. It's going to get into the corner. I wish he'd called that one now a bit. Or did he call the corner? No, it hasn't because it's a, mi a missed call of eight. I just realised that. So it's now 4 1. So the penalty's severe for uh, having to kick at that eight, call a pocket, and you miss call it, it's a foul. I think he was just kidding us on. So it's definitely 4-1. Uh, dry break. <coughs> a bit of a bit of a mess in the left hand side of the table, a poor shot in the one ball there by Bongaholic. Well, the choice has been made. Witt and Ed Ball are on the solids. Well, he's right behind the six, so surely he's got to take it out. Now, the five goes, but it only goes from this angle here. Yeah, I don't know how I've made my arrows so small. I need to find out. I need to read the instructions of this little gimmick thing. Uh, the little uh, on-screen thing to see how to increase the size of that. Now, goodness knows what button I've pressed, but it's certainly it's not changing in size. The arrows have gone very small. But we'll, we'll work it out and we'll get it fixed at some point. Not tonight, though. But now they've got rid of the five. Which is what they wanted to do. 
take the four. Now, if you can take the one there and get the cue ball onto the two, they could be home and dry. Oh, he's gone too far, has he? Oh dear. Yes, he has. He's left whip blocked out. Can't see the one. Gonna have to jump to get to it. And then he's scratched off the eight. And what's more, he's fouled off the eight and eight balls get in and that's a rack gifted to their opponents. The 11 ball has gone into the bottom right. So this match might have a long way to go yet, the way things are turning out. Bongaholic pots the solid. Now, having done that, they've immediately got a problem here. You've got the three, the 13, and the one ball, so there's two solids tied up with that uh, 13 ball. Well, he tried some weird combo there. That was never on. Now we can see where the problem lies for uh, Wit and Ed Ball. 12 balls stuck next to the 5 down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen there, so it's doing nothing. It's got no pocket to go into. Well, if only Wit had got back a bit further on that, if he had left an angle there on the 10 ball, his partner could try and bring the cue ball into the 12 to open it up. I don't think the angle's there on that 10 ball. Well, that's, that's not really changed anything a great deal. It's opened up the the 12, but it's still an awkward position to try and uh, actually pot it. Well, Bongaholic's got a choice. He can play Q awkwardly over the five, or he can pot the five. Well, that's finished not in a bad position. There's a cut on the nine. But it's not an easy cut for Wit. He's played it well though. He's although he's missed it, he's left it blocked in the pocket. Well, Ed Bow could call the reverse bank on this uh, 12. He could call it to go into that pocket. But he's decided just to nudge the 5 in. So that's now conceded control of the table. 
to Bongaholic and G Money. And they're not exactly in a, a pristine condition here to try and run out. Well, I think it's going to be very difficult. Well, that's a great shot in the six. It's going to be very difficult to run this rack out. And Bongaholic, well, is he going to play the bank? He should really call it. Well, he's calling the seven. <coughs> Into the right middle. What's happening with the seven? Well, let's have a look. Well, the 13 goes, no problem. It's just getting on to it. So this is uh, Wit and Ed Ball, their chance to win the match and the tournament. And probably a good idea to take that 13 ball right now that they're on it. And I would suggest you take the 12, because then you can roll the 10 in. Take the 12, roll the 10 in, get the cue ball down to there and take the 8 into the middle. That's the match over. Now you see he's taking the 10. The problem with that shot is that it's never a great guarantee to get good on the 8 off this ball when it's in such an awkward bit in the corner. It could go all too smoothly, but... Ed Ball's playing this with left hand English, that's going to check the cue ball up. Has he got the pace on it? It looks like it. He's played it well. And Witt surely cannot miss this. Little cut into the middle. So this for the match. And in it goes, and so Witt and Ed Ball have won this week's 8-Ball World Scotch Doubles by 5 racks to 2, beating G-Money and Bongaholic. Right, let's have a look at the bracket for the final time. We can see that the runners-up get $200 V dollars between each other, and the winners get 400 So, that concludes the Saturday night 8-Ball World Scotch Doubles. And we will bid you good night. Thank you for watching and we will see you again soon.